Hi and welcome to a new video. In this video I wanted to do a review of the settings that you'll probably have on your standard TalkTalk Talk Wi-Fi hub. So this is particularly the one as I've got pictured now on screen uh, where you can see the uh, TalkTalk Talk Wi-Fi hub. So it's called uh, basically the uh, Fast 5364 and you'll see that model on the back of the sticker as it's certified here as you can see on the back of your router it will have all your details. So I'm just going to log into the uh, port where it normally says, so your router's IP address will normally be uh, 192.168.1.1 um, and then it, your username is always admin and then your password is going to be on the back of the sticker as well. Your admin uh, password, so it's going to be different to your network password, so always make sure if you have any problems it's always going to be the router password here. So we just enter those details here and click the login. After a while you'll see that you'll uh, log into the dashboard so you can see here the dashboard is quite straightforward and also it will have any of your version number of your firmware down here. So you always want to make sure on here is always you've got the latest firmware but uh, most of these uh, talk to routers they always have automatic updates by default. So as you can see here you do have uh, standard settings so you've got my internet connection, my Wi-Fi and my devices. So we'll go through each one of these individually, but as you can see here, this is just a quick dashboard and then the refresh when you first log in, just so you can see about what the status of your uh, TalkTalk Talk, uh, Wi-Fi hub is. So if we go into the uh, C internet settings, so this is going to be where you can currently see it's disconnected because I've not plugged it into my internet. So you can see here where it's got basically if you have a problem with the internet you can actually quite nicely visualization that shows you that the between the uh, home router and your computer is green but that to the internet is not working so that means that you're because I'm uh, connected it uh, that means that there's a problem so me connecting to the router is fine but the router going to the internet there's an issue so basically um, as you can see here onwards is uh, the connection to the internet so this is where you'd either uh, uh, contact TalkTalk Talk by uh, online chat or uh, by telephone their customer service or you can just uh, do some basic uh, uh, analysis and have a look or even the most basic one is switching it on uh, sorry switching it off and then switching it back on again uh, normally wait a few minutes for it to basically switch off and then before switching it back on and then give it a 10 minutes for depending on what kind of internet connection you have um, for it to settle and then connect and everything else so as we see here, it does says the disconnect as it said before. So you can go to advanced settings. Um, so what we're going to go on to is next. And then basically what it's going to tell you is just give you a kind of warning to say changes to anything you make under advance can affect your internet connection or disconnect or even um, basically permanently disconnect your internet connection until you reset the router or contact or talk. So just be wary of that and when you're messing around with these connections. So you can see here is now taking us to like the advanced settings hub uh, for your Wi-Fi hub. Um, so and this is under Wi-Fi. So you can see here you have Ethernet. So this will show you what uh, basically your uh, your router will have or, or your router will have basically the yellow four yellow ports that you'll probably have on the back of this is the Ethernet. So what devices you've got connected in there. So there'll be always a maximum of four four devices on here. You have the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz so as we said before the 2.4 is for is an older standard um, but it goes a further distance so you, normally your doorbells and some of your IP cameras uh, your smart plugs and things like that will still use this 2.4 gigahertz band most now hopefully uh, new devices of uh, IOT or Internet of Things devices you might uh, not know that what that stands for is basically it hopefully with the new uh, doorbell video doorbells and then also your uh, indoor cameras and things like that or any other technology your TVs sky box uh, or the talk talk TV box or hopefully we use the 5 gigahertz band because it's uh, much faster and a better connection uh, speed you'll get for that so you, underneath here you can see where it's got guests so you can set up a guest network so if you have regular family coming around uh, to the uh, house you can set up this so they can't access your main network but they can access your inter get internet access so for security or anything like that 
You can set up a guest network and move on to that in a minute to show you how to do that. So then you have the TalkTalk Talk Wi-Fi hub here and then access control and internet connectivity. So basically, as I said, I'm not plugged in, so it's not connected, but here we should show connected uh, to your internet. So if we just go to ethernet and go to the little cog here, so this will basically bring up the settings. And here, as I said, with the four ports on the back, it'll show you if it's either down, so that means that nothing's plugged in. Um, and then when it shows up, that means that it's connected. And also you'll see the link speed where it's connected and any data that's going back and forward. You can click on the show more button where it, or if you have any problems with it, uh, support or anything like that, or if you want to self-diagnose any issues yourself, you can see them, uh, identify them here using the ethernet. So it's good that they have that kind of uh, information there for you to have a look. So next we'll go on to, as we said, the 2.4. So again, uh, I won't duplicate here because these roughly will be the same settings, but if we go to the 2.4 and the little cog says, so again, this is the advanced settings. It'll show you here, you've got basic Wi-Fi mesh, WPS, um, advanced and Mac filtering. So again, be careful with these settings as you change them because you can affect your internet connection and devices connecting. Uh, with everything here. So again, you've got this switched on. Um, so again, again, it's showing it's up, so it means it's switched on. This is gonna be your TalkTalk Talk, uh, SSID. Um, so then you can unplug this if it's visible. So you, if you untick this one, it means it's gonna hide the uh, network name and will not broadcast it. Uh, but again, that makes connecting things uh, much more difficult. You have the channel selection here. So if you are having interference and you've used some kind of Wi-Fi analyzer app on your phone and you've identified like it's currently on the channel 11, you can see that everyone in your building or around you is on channel 11. You can come in here and customize it to channel one, six uh, or 12 here. So you can change them around and everything else or individually between these other channels if you uh, know what you're doing. Again, you around with security, you have the options here. So it goes all the way up to WPA2. Um, this is on the latest firmware, so it doesn't support WPA3, the latest security. But again, just leave this as it is, unless you uh, want this to change this for any specific reasons. And if you want to, you can see the options are all here for you to choose. And also just to, uh, uh, to make you aware, never select these WEP ones because they are very vulnerable to be easily hacked. Uh, within seconds then you've got your password so this is your security so you can show your click here and it will show your wi-fi password uh, again you can come in here to update the password again these are the specifications of the what you can type in so it's between 8 and 63 characters and it's only the following special characters you can use in here as well within your password so you can have a note of this for future reference Wi-Fi mesh, so this is where you can uh, basically select if you have uh, multiple, uh, if uh, TalkTalk Talk have given you other uh, hubs to extend out your internet connection, you can come in here and you can actually uh, customize these details around here. You can switch things off, see the extenders and devices. Again, be careful how, what you do with these if you're not too sure. Um, and you can see here that you've got the model your, uh, how the uptime is and the type of internet connection and everything else. So it gives you more, more details. You do have WPS here. So this is the button that was on the back of your uh, router or router. Um, basically on here, as you can see here, it will be this symbol, this button here. Again, um, it says if Wi-Fi Protect Set is disabled here, the physical button on your router will also be disabled. So if you do switch this off. For security, I would always advise to switch this off because this is a, another vulnerability. But again, it's up to you if you use this for when setting up things. It does make life much easier for you if you're a non-technical person, then potentially leave this on. Um, but there is security concerns around this, so I always advise people to always switch this off. And in a lot of new routers as well, um, they have this by default switched off. So next we go on to the advanced under 2.4 gigahertz and you can see here where we can actually change, change the wireless mode. So you can change for any reason if you want to change it back to any legacy ones, uh, then you can change it here. Or if you've only got the newer standard of uh, Wi-Fi that this goes up to is Wi-Fi uh, 11N, then you can actually just select that and not have any of the backward compatibility. 
of the older devices because G and B, to be honest, there's very, very few devices out there now that need that support. And then you can come here. So this is set to 20. Again, this is going to, if you've got no problems, it's fine. Um, if you have newer devices and you want to want faster internet on the 2.4, you can set this to 40. This opens up the bandwidth kind of thing. So it goes from like a two lane uh, A road to a, a four lane motorway uh, kind of thing. So opening it up, that makes it a bit quicker. And also you can choose auto. Just be wary with some older devices they don't like and can't connect to the 40. So just be wary when you're dis when you're actually using this and changing it um, about reconnecting and changing these settings. So it might cause issues with compatibility with other um, your devices around the house. And then when we have here is basically we have Mac filtering. So this is a kind of security. So basically it says here allow is no filtering. Uh, so allow all, allow is allow only devices on the table and deny. So you can select here to allow certain devices. You can come down here, select the device and then add, add that device there. So that means that this device, this Mac address is kind of like a serial number for each device. Your mobile phones, your TVs, Skybox, Sky, uh, Talk Talk TV box, uh, smart plugs, everything you can think of as Wi-Fi has a Mac address. And basically what this does for security is just locks down and you can define what devices connect. Again, this is for extra security for people who are technically knowledgeable um, and want to do this. If you're just a standard user and you're not very technical, then just be wary about using this because it means every time you want to add something to your network, you'll have to come to these advanced settings to add it. Okay, so if we then just go back, you can see here to the green home button um, and then we will let that load. Again, if we then just go to the five gigahertz, so this is gonna have roughly the same uh, settings as we said before so I won't go through all of these but again what it'll do is around options around channels and things like that it'll give you more options around here and then you'll be able to here you'll be able to select the same things around the password and again you'll be able to use your same settings here so if we go back here next one we'll move on to is the guest uh, network so again if you want to as we said you want to set up a guest network for people that if you have people come around all the time and don't want them accessing your home devices you can enable it here uh, toggle to switch that on and uh, then basically apply and then you'll have a new uh, ssid with guest on it again you can set the settings and also for security you can certain devices to connect to that guest network some people also use this guest network where they set them up for uh, devices that, that uh, if you're more technical uh, knowledge kind of thing and do you know is that this is a kind of you can say it's a separate network that's from your own where you can have it basically have just uh, unsecured devices where you don't think you're not too sure about security on them uh, so they can't connect to anything in your main network um, like your servers or any uh, home devices you have you can connect these unsecured devices like smart plugs that don't really get any updates at all once you buy it uh, you can connect to the guest network so it's more secure and separated from your main network again this is for more technical uh, people so you just have to be wary of that and it's again it's the same for the 5 gigahertz you can set the guest network up either for the 2.4 or the 5 if we go to access control here with a little shield here again is around port forwarding so again as it says here you might need it for your consoles and things like that to set up port forwarding it does have a UPnP as well so that means that any uh, kind of like your Xbox can reach out to the, your uh, router here and then basically set up the uh, a port automatically again there's a vulnerability sometimes around this so more advanced people switch this off because and then add the ports manually um, but again if you're a normal user you might potentially and you're not very you just want things to work then it's best to leave these perhaps on you do have here around firewalls you can respond to ping so always leave that off um, and the level of the firewall you can see here is medium you can set this to high or you can customize the firewall as well you have a DMZ, so this is opening up a device to the internet, so it bypasses your firewall and any security. Again, be very careful of what devices you add to this. It's because if you add a device here, it's not secured by your router's firewall. Again, here is your user detail. So this is your admin as we logged into the router that's on the back of the sticker. Um, if you want to change that password, you can do it here. Again, remember this password because um, when you 
if you come in a month or two months time you're going to obviously think it's the one on the back of the password and you're not going to be able to log in because you've changed it here so again always write this down somewhere or keep it secure and so that's all the Wi-Fi uh, kind of settings that we've gone through here um, in detail. So now if we just go back to the home function, we'll go back here. So that was the internet connection and the Wi-Fi as we saw and my devices. So again, if we go to see Wi-Fi settings under this little tab, this is the kind of main dashboard where you can see your Wi-Fi password, my Wi-Fi network, and you can enable or disable the uh, Wi-Fi. And then if we come down here, then you can see here the uh, basically the speed um, of the five gigahertz so that goes up to 2.2 .2, or 2,200 megabits per second. And this one's 450 and it tells you around here the, your network names. And, and you can then click on here basically to view all devices. You can then go again as we went to before back to the advanced settings by there. And that takes you back to here uh, so you can go into more details then you have manage my devices on the third and last tab and again this will just tell you that all the devices listed under each of the band so you can see here identify making sure that they're connected and anything else again you've got view my wi-fi so once you click on that that will go back to that option where you can then see it's enabled and your passwords and then the wi-fi band and then you can just go back to your dashboard so that's all the, a quick run through of all the settings so you understand what potentials in your router and what you can actually look at and things like that. So again, it's basically just giving you an idea of how you can configure it and is it fit for purpose or potentially you might need to buy a third party one um, like from Asus or Netgear or anything like that. If you are looking for other kind of routers out there or routers, then uh, just to have a look at some of my other videos on Asus ones that are out there. Um, they do all different price points and all different kinds of things but they add a lot of more features where for security and doing things like that and also around you can turn them into backup hard drives and cloud and VPNs and things like that where sometimes potentially you might want those extra features and just pay a little bit of a premium for it again there's no subscription uh, like with other products out there it's just a one-time cost and then you just have them features and they do get regular updates as well. So once you've finished again, then you will just make sure you always log out um, of your actual router. So it will just basically make sure if you want to save any of the changes you've made and it will take you back to the main login screen here. I hope you found this video useful. Again, if you have any questions or anything around like that, then leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you as fast as possible. I'd also like to know if you're using this uh, kind of uh, router, um, then are you actually, uh, are you happy with it? Is it giving you any issues or are you, have you swapped straight away to a third party one and which one have you used? So just so other people know which routers are compatible with different connections between ADSL and then fiber. And of course, um, some people have got other different connections as well that potentially they use. Okay, so thanks for watching and have a great day.